Greetings and salutations, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome inside. We are back on League Unlocked. Find a little Han Solo on that digital Millennium Falcon today. And I don't know what we did to be in the good graces of the LCK to be blessed with two pretty damn sick matchups on just a regular Friday. Not even a full weekend matchup, but we got both the Quang Dong Freaks versus Gen G and Han Will Life versus D Plus for a pair of contenders or dark horses looking to get to that contender status. Obviously, KDF 3 0 since Bull has come into that starting lineup, fully riding that momentum after taking down D Plus. But could they hand Gen G their first loss? of the 2024 spring split. Well, in game one, it looked like they absolutely had the opportunity to at least get things started. The bot lane, Bull and Andal were playing as aggressively as ever against Pays in the heads of all bot lanes. Things were looking pretty good. Genji did stack up three dragons, so the soul point was perennially a threat for them, but Guangdong was not stepping back as still Bull making that Lucian look real good. He's full health popping off, but the thing to keep an eye out for this entire game was keen on that Cassante. Put a pin in that. We'll come back to that as we scrap around the Baron. Still an even game, about a 1K gold lead for Quang Gong, but finally, Gen G is able to take over. It's a smooth engage and flank from Chovy to get things kicked off, and you thought this game might be over, but honestly, Quang Gong might win this game if Keen and Genji have any champion other than Kasante because Dudu putting in work. He's at 40% health and he's able to solo kill an AD carry. That's just Aatrox things, but it doesn't matter what Aatrox is doing because on the other side, it's just a top lane battle. And Keen, look at this Kasante. He's sub 50 health. He kills a support in about four hits. And now he's at 20%. Dudu's at 80%. And it doesn't matter because Cassante is ludicrously, absurdly, disgustingly busted. We need to get a formal investigation riot because Quang Dong just got done dirty. Genji would close the game out from there. But even at a, I think it was a 4K deficit at that point heading into that fight, KDF looked like there was no quit in them. They almost got back into it, but Keen does the most damage in the game, is the most tanky copy paste god bless this wasn't against d plus kia because showmaker would have absolutely lost his mind and unfortunately for kwang dong not just from that but as we've seen in most of the series so far for gen g the level up curve for them after that first game uh, pretty much becomes astronomical and it's only heightened when Mr. Chovy gets his pocket pick Yone, which I think he now has 80, almost 90% win rate on, we know he is an absolute treat to watch on that pick. It helps that he's kind of a, a bit busted as well. Bulldog on the Akali, trying to do something, but look at this strength. Yone attached to, leaps all the way back and gets the kill there. Now we're diving on the top side. This time there was no Cassante to be had, but Keen just pivots into that other beefy boy in the top lane who's completely unkillable. But this one, as the level up happened for Genji, it was done and dusted before it really even got underway. We already got a 5K uh, gold lead by 15 minutes, and this one just quickly ballooned out of control. A lot of kills being racked up for a squad like Gen G, who's typically a slower paced squad, but 17 kills, 23 minutes, and they are knocking on those Nexus doors, burning it down. It was another Lucian Nami game uh, out of Bull and Andil, but the Lahens, uh, Milio paired with Pays of Felios, again, has the last laugh. And we had this kind of both against D plus and against T1, when it got into that third game, the level up from Gen G only got hyper accelerated as they end up obliterating Quang Gong in that second game. The win streak is over. Gen G moves to five and zero. But even though they get zero two'd or two zeroed, uh, do the freaks 
I still feel good about this squad. I still feel like not only are they a playoff team, but they can test some of the top four in the LCK. Case in point, that first game. We'll pretend game two uh, never ended up happening. But that first game, you see the potential that CV Max has got in these guys. And very excited to see the continued growth of Guangdong. They're only going to separate themselves further from that bottom five in the LCK. Other big matchup, Hanwa versus D+. Plus. Both coming off disappointing 0-2s. Obviously, Hanwas was against T1, so a little bit different. But right into this one, it was competitive in the first game. Definitely back and forth. It was even for the majority of it. About a 2k gold lead here uh, in this fight around Dragon for Hanwa. And then it you know, starts getting... A little bit rough we got lucid on the viego in this one he was having fun showmaker was getting fed on the leblanc but despite the fancy footwork here he gets caught out and kind of his whole team gets a bit baited into this one as everybody starts tp and in but showmaker dies a lot of the damage is gone for d plus and hanwell life well the wrecking crew the party crew has arrived and this i mean 22 minutes basically uh was enough to snowball this one out of control for them and then things only got a little bit worse three kills to nine already an 8k gold lead at 23 minutes uh zeka gets to be on one of his you know three champions that everyone loves to meme him for but he does look damn good on that akali and uh doran got the gwen as well he survived a couple of ganks that were like three four men trying to dive him and was having none of it so he has a great Gwen performance Han will life end up taking game one after a somewhat even uh, early game but very quickly able to snowball this one out of control look leaps and bounds different than they did in those two games against T1 and we we gave him a lot of flack Zeka on the corky in those games against T1 it wasn't great it was in fact just straight up bad but he doesn't shy away from it, picks it again in game two against D+. And with the package, we know that there's a bit of an int effect that that can have as they scrap around the Hextech Dragon. And here it is for Zeka. Dashes in 1v4 and then dashes right back out and kind of gets blown up pretty quickly uh, as he gets hopped on by King and Znar and dies. That, that was kind of a bit of the T1 effect. That was the level we saw out of his Corky there. But he has redemption in this game. He doesn't even need the big rocket to steal the Baron from D+. This was the absolute momentum shifter. It was like a 3k gold lead at this point for D+. The Baron completely turns the gold lead on its head and everything map control goes the way of Hanwha life and truthfully they did not look back from there as a Viper on Kalista is usually a treat to watch when it comes to team fights peanuts going deep on the maokai to get a nice little shutdown onto the varus and pretty quickly after that baron the game was just over it, the gold lead was just starting to balloon over into the favor of hanwa life and before you know it they're already beaten down nexus doors and closing out the game so really solid bounce back from hanwa they continue to look great against everybody in the league that is not named t1 and for d plus all of a sudden, it's a three-game losing streak. They dropped to two and four. Now they're a couple of games behind a squad like Fear X, who side don't have an absolutely insane schedule going and probably won't win a game for about three weeks. But D-plus falling behind the eight ball, falling behind Kwang Gong, falling behind Hanwa, and a lot of the issues, you know, the macro, objective control, communication, things that we've talked about this quarter, with this squad for the last two plus years starting to rear its ugly head you feel like the couple first series aiming was looking fantastic with kellen but now you're putting him on senate duty he's having less of an impact it's more showmaker feels like he needs to do some of the heavy lifting and in those games sometimes when you have to do the heavy lifting he goes a little bit too hard and ends up getting caught out we're not panicking or worried yet for d plus we've still had so many positive signs but two and four uh, i mean you need some marquee statement wins against some of these upper echelon lck teams if you want us to start feeling good about what d plus is doing again and we were so high on them after that two one start uh but three in losses in a row now feeling not so good about them it's a little dip into the lpl now ninjas in pajamas against world elite 
and World Elite, uh, they got guys like Prince on here, Wayward, Fofo, guys who you may have forgotten about as misfits, outcasts from their former squads trying to make a little reunion resurgence on World Elite. But today, we went to three games, but it was all about Fotic in the bottom lane on the Zaya. 16-0-11 in back-to-back -back wins for NIP and Total kill score, it was 37 to 4 in favor of the Ninjas after they dropped that first game. But Fotic is playing absolutely out of his mind through these first four series for NIP. Just look at the confidence this guy is playing with on the Zaya. Walking forward 1v4. He's going forward and flashing in with the ulti, even though he kind of whiffs on the feathers there and almost ends up inting it. He's just playing on that line as everybody on World Elite throws themselves in to try and kill the Zaya and they are unable to do it. He was doing ludicrous amounts of damage across the board. Uh, Rookie was also fantastic on the Talia in this game. Rookie, no question. He looked a bit washed in the first one to two series for NIP, but the last two or three, he has looked like peak rookie form. Very excited to see uh, Fotic. And listen, Zhuo has been fantastic. Better than advertised so far uh, for this NIP squad as they start now 3-1. and one. That lone loss coming to JDG, and they had at least a competitive first game against them. So that Dark Horse status still going incredibly strong for NIP in these early days of the spring split. But just always happy to see Rookie on a competitive team and happy to see Fotic get the respect that he deserves because even when he was on after Rookie left and V5 was you know, a shell of its former 14-2 and two regular season self, Fotic was still playing at a pretty damn high level in the most historically stacked position in the LPL that is 80 carry. So excited to see him playing at a legit all-pro level. And NIP, don't look now, but they're going to be making some noise in playoffs. That's my way-too-early prediction for this spring split. But that is all the time today for League Unlocked. My name is Eric. As always, thank you, you wonderful people of this wonderful planet, for joining us. And we will catch you on that flippity-flip.